Today I'm really pleased to be joined by Hayley Tamadden, whose big smile and bubbly personality lit up our screens during her time in the role of Andrea Beckett between 2013 and 2015. Hayley, thanks so much for agreeing to come on the podcast today. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Great. Um, so let's let's talk uh, Corrie then. So before joining okay. the soap, you'd already had a, a number of other roles on stage and screen, uh, most notably Del Dingle in Emmerdale. Was Coronation Street always something you'd wanted to do? Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, um, my mum is my mum is an avid soap fan. Mm. So when I first got in Emmerdale, um, I rang her and told her, and my dad said she nearly fell down the stairs <laughs> um, with excitement. And when I told her I got in Corrie, it was exactly the same. Um, she just couldn't believe it. Yeah, so I've now been in the two soaps my mum so desperately loved, <laughs> um, and so did I. I grew up watching both of them. Um, and the weird thing about Corrie. You might not know this, but when I was 16, mm. they opened the indoor replica of Coronation Street in Blackpool. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? I haven't been there. Yeah, it was I next door to the Sand Castle. Yeah. And, um, and I got a job there when I was 16 as a tour guide. Oh, brilliant. And um, we had to, like, like play certain roles. And I was always Hill Ogden, <laughs> which is hilarious. And then... Um, yeah, so I, I kind of, I, I worked there as a tour guide on the indoor um, quarry, and one night they invited all of the Coronation Street stars from Manchester to come for a party in Blackpool, and I was 16, 17 years old, and I met all of them, and I remember meeting Barbara Knox and, and saying to her one day, one day I'll be in Coronation Street. <laughs> And, and then it came around, all those years later, it came around and I, it's like a full circle for me. Oh, so hot, weird. That's incredible. So what were you told about the character of Andrea before you started? Oh, um, do you know what? You, you're kind of given a brief. So when you get an audition, they send you um, what's called a breakdown of the character. Mm. And um, my breakdown was that she was late 30s she had a daughter that she had when she was very young. Mm. So she was 16 when she fell pregnant with a daughter. And she wasn't, um, she wanted to be kind of like a hip and trendy mom. Her daughter was 19 and going to university uh, when I joined the show. So they wanted her to be quite kind of a bit trendy. But she's had, she'd had a heart broken numerous times. Yeah. Um, but what it didn't say in the breakdown was that they were going to make her character a compulsive liar. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that kind of came about when I joined the show. Um, yeah, they, they kind of said, right, we're going to turn her into a bit of a liar. So everything she says is a lie, basically. Mm. And at first I was like, oh, no, everyone's going to hate me. <laughs> um, but it, it kind of worked really well. It worked really well. And, yeah, it, it was good. Yeah. Do, do you think there are any developments of the character based on the facts or based on the way that you chose to interpret her? Yeah, I think so. I think because there's so many writers on Corrie and they're all so brilliant and they kind of come up with the idea of who they want to bring in and and then, what it, you know, whatever you do in your audition really is, is what they kind of base it on. And mm. in my audition, I turned up and all of the other girls were wearing... Um, jeans and trainers yeah. and t-shirts or dungarees and things like that and I walked in and I'd worn a, the tightest mini dress <laughs> so pretty much it, with a pair of high heels and a denim jacket and I looked at everyone else and was like oh I've got this so wrong like they're never going to pick me I've got it wrong completely and mm. um, and actually they did pick me and maybe what I chose to wear and the way I chose to do the character, it kind of, you know, made a difference for me. So that, it worked in my favour. But on the yeah. day, I was like, oh, well, this is just a car crash. I've definitely not got this job. Um, and yeah, it kind of turned around for me. So that's good. Yeah. So uh, Andrea's role had been quite built up before you even appeared on screen with Steve talking a lot about you to Michelle in, in the weeks before. Do you, do you think that helped Andrea make more of a splash when she finally arrived in the Rovers? I think so. And... Um, I mean, I was only meant to go for three months. Yeah. The same with them um, when I joined Emmerdale. My my contract started on a three month contract, and um, it kind of tested the water with Andrew and you know to see how it would work. And at first, it was meant to be that I I kind of was best friends with Steve, and that but I but I was in love with him, and they were going to put me and Steve together. Mm. But then they saw a bit of chemistry between me and Craig Charles, and yeah. 
went the other way and thought, actually, which we could keep her in the show longer if we put her with Craig. And so that's what they did, and it, and it worked. And yeah, it was it was great because it meant I got to stay for two years. So yeah, that was good. Yeah. I, I often thought, uh, well, Gemma and I did when we were watching it, that Steve maybe needed rescuing from Michelle's constant nagging at times. <laughs> so we were kind of gunning for you two to get together at one point. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it was kind of always on the cards. And I wonder what would happen if they brought her back one day, you know, and maybe that would, that would be a story that could continue. But... Um, yeah, it's it's. I think the writers see things, and the producers go, "Oh my gosh, that's that's working actually." And her and Craig have got good on screen chemistry. And I mean, I loved working with those boys, Simon Gregson and Craig Charles, are the two of the most funniest people to work with. Mm. And we never ever stop laughing ever. Um, and if we did any scenes in the cab office with Sue Cleaver as well, oh my gosh, <laughs> we just we spent most of our time crying tears of I laughter. Bet, I it was bet. brilliant. Yeah, Steve was and still is one of Coronation Street's most important characters then. How did you feel about working alongside sort of such a big name as <laughs> Simon and Kim as well? And... Okay, well, I'll let you into a little secret, although he does know, he does know this. <laughs> but there was, when I was a kid, I, I didn't really have many idols on my wall or anything like that with posters and stuff. But the only two people I did have posters of were Steve McDonald <laughs> and Robbie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> my audition um, my audition scene was where I had to kind of try to seduce Steve McDonald mm. and I remember stood in the Rovers because they filmed my they filmed your audition on set and um, I stood there and and the director said right really flirt with him you know go, go for it and I was thinking if only he knew <laughs> that I had a picture of him on my wall when I was 16 I mean this is embarrassing and um Anyway, I, I, a few kind of months into me being there, I did tell him, <laughs> which he laughed at a lot. But, um, yeah, it, it was great, you know. It was just, uh, you, I just kind of felt really part of the family. Mm. And um, I think that was a good thing, yeah. yeah. That's funny what you were saying about the picture of him on the wall, because I was a big Red Dwarf fan when I was younger, and I had Red Dwarf posters with Craig Charles on my wall That's as well. Mental. Different reasons for why you had um, Simon, but... <laughs> <laughs> and you had Craig Charles. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, was that was he quite fun to to work with as well, Craig? Good yeah, kind of oh comedian. God, yeah. We just hit it off straight away, um, and the three of us were really, you know, we worked really well together. We had a lot of stuff to do together. It was all very funny to start with, and then me and Craig towards the end had some really emotional mm. scenes to do. And Craig is incredible at um, doing the emotional stuff. You know, you think he's he's a comedy guy, but Actually, when he when he does the serious stuff, he's just amazing to work with. Mm. And he'd start crying during a scene, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, he's crying his eyes out!" And it just made me cry. So it it just really worked. It just really worked. We we, we loved working together. It was good. Yeah, because Craig wasn't trained as a he was he was a poet before he started uh, working as an actor, wasn't he? Yeah, and he's so good at that. Mm. Like, he'd come in every day and read poetry to me, and he knows it all off by heart, word for word. And, yeah, he's just brilliant at that. I learned a lot being on that show, you know. I, I don't think you ever stop learning ever as an actor, or you shouldn't do anyway. But um, from those guys, and Sue Cleaver, and, and Kim Marsh, and Beverly Callard, and, you know, that group that I work with, so intimately I, I just learned so much from them it was mm. amazing yeah who else did you end up growing close to whether they're in your stories or not you you got quite a few friends on the cast still haven't you yeah I you know I, I did um, I did Pride at the weekend and uh, I walked in and one of the directors was there and she said oh my god it's like you've never left <laughs> and I said I know I feel like I've not left because I made so many good friends and um, Dan Brocklebank is, uh, you know already, like my best friend mm. from, um, we met 15 years ago and we follow each other around the country basically and end up strangely doing the same jobs together and living together and living in the same buildings and all, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so he's my best, bestest mate, but um, Sue Cleaver, you know, I, I just adore that lady and Simon and Craig and now, you know, um, like Brooke Vincent, Anthony Cotton, Julia Goulding, and um, they're all such really gorgeous people. Mm. And I think Corrie's really lucky for having really 
really down to earth, lovely people that work there. Mm. You knew yeah. um, Sally Ann Matthews from Emmerdale as well, didn't you? I did. I love Sally. Like again, like she's one of my best mates. It's, it's uh, I, I did. I did Emmerdale with Sal for years, and yeah, it, she, I, I love that lady. She's fantastic. Well, she's probably listening at the moment because I know she listens to the podcast. So, no. <laughs> good job you said that. Oh, there you it? go. I've said something really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the biggest twist during Andrea's time on the show was that, despite going out with Lloyd, she was actually still married to another man. Did you always know about the secret double life of Andrea, or did it come later? No, it, um, I, I didn't really know anything until I started. And it was just kind of a few weeks in that they started saying, OK, this is going to happen here and, and she's actually already married and we're going to try and keep this a secret. And, we're gonna, and I thought, oh, my God, this is so good. Like, mm-hmm. it was so exciting. And the, the stuff where, um, you know, he went on the roof and I had to climb the roof, that was like my first big stunt that I'd ever done. Yeah, I was um, going to ask you about that. What can you tell us about the uh, the infamous roof dangling scene? Well, I said I want to do all of it. And they were like, no, we can't let you do it all. And I was like, yeah, please let me do all of it. I, 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 I'm not bothered. I'm not scared. I just, I want to do all of my own stunts. And um, they let me do actually all of it apart from one tiny bit mm. um, where they had this brilliant stunt girl come in and... Um, it, there, there was quite a scary bit that I, I was a bit scared of, and, and she did it. But yeah, I did all the rest myself, and I was really chuffed with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also loved the scene. I don't, do you remember when Neil was singing along to Hole Again to Andrew? Oh my god, how window? funny was that? Were you able to film oh, that without just bursting you, out into laughter? You know how many times we had to film that? Like <laughs> how many times we had to walk, go walk back and do it again because we'd just get there and all of us would start laughing. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, you know, there's so much of that on set at Corrie. It, it was so funny, so funny. Mm. So um, we were really gutted to find out in uh, 2015 that both Andrea and Lloyd would be leaving. W- would, you like, would you have liked to have stayed longer? Oh my gosh, yeah. Mm. Like, that, that show is just... Um, yeah, it means the world to me. I, I, yeah, I would probably go back in a heartbeat. Was it um, a case it, of Craig leaving, so you kind of had to? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's you know sad for me, really. But we were a couple, and we, you know, they kind of wrote that we were going to have a baby, and the best thing to do was to move away and start a fresh life somewhere else. Mm. And um, I have had a baby. It was ten pounds. I mean, how the hell that came out of me? I will never know. <laughs> I'm only five foot. <laughs> sure they'd have you at least I mean at least you got a good exit in the live episode didn't you yeah I mean to, to be going out in the live just doing that was scary enough but to have one of the stories be yours mm. I mean that was an honor you know it really was mm. and then we were nervous but me and Craig also knew that that was the last time we would ever do anything yeah. and it was live so the tears were real um we, we couldn't hold it back. I mean, there's a scene where we drive down the the, the, the cobbles in a in a car, yeah. and we've got balloons in our hand, and we kiss on the back of this car. And I mean, neither of us could even breathe. We were crying. We were yeah. just so sad but happy. It was a really weird emotion. Um, and then afterwards, you know, all the champagne came out onto the cobbles, and we all celebrated. And it was kind of like a bittersweet kind of thing. So happy we'd done the live, but also that was our last ever time on Corrie. So it was yeah, weird. I remember you tweeting at the time saying you didn't want to go, and we kind of said, just just on ad lib on the day and say, oh, I've changed your mind. You know what? I mean, I could have. I, I would never work for ITV ever again if I had done it. Can you imagine? I know. <laughs> But was that Andrea still, and Anza Lloyd both had a second goodbye the following week, didn't you? How did that come about? Where you, you went off in the car and then the, the following week you came back to say goodbye again? Yeah, I don't... I, I, it was weird. I don't know how that was um, written or what, what came about there, but it, it was nice to do that, um, just to kind of have that last little goodbye with everyone. Yeah, um, have off the scenes. Yeah, it... it I, I think because you're not killed off, it's never goodbye. You just never know. You never know what might happen. 
Mm, yeah, yeah. Who knows whether the baby's even right? Well, you never know. I mean, Steve right? could, could have been Steve, can it? He's quite potent, we've seen. <laughs> Here's me writing my own storyline. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, after leaving Coronation Street, you made a big splash playing Roxy Hart in the National Tour of Chicago. Tell us a bit about that. Oh, what was that like? Oh, my God, that is just the most amazing thing ever. You came to see it, didn't you? You did, yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, it was incredible. Um, it kind of broke me a little bit. <laughs> I'm not as young as I was, um, but it was the. I, I've been waiting to play that part since I was 19. Really? In fact, younger. When I was 16 and I went to college, um, Ruthie Henshaw was at my college and she was leaving as I was joining. And so we all went to see Chicago in the first year of college. Mm. And I remember watching her and thinking, I'll do this. One day I'll do this. Um, and it took me 20 years, but I did it. I mm. did it in the end. It's like what you said about uh, Coronation Street, really, isn't it? I know, you I set know. set your sights on, so then you go for it. Well, that's it, you know, I, I'm a big believer in that. Have you read The Secret? There's no. a brilliant book called no. The Secret. If you've not read it, you should. And uh, it's, it's all about what you want, you can get. It's just all about how you do it and how you think and, you know, creating your own path in life, so to speak. Mm. And um, I do do that a lot. It, think about something I really want and I really work towards getting it and then you know mm. I get it hopefully yeah. Yeah. so was it was it quite tiring being on stage uh, for all how, how long was it was it about a year you were touring for? I did it for a year yeah. I was meant to do six months and after six months they asked me if I'd stay on and um, I was having such a ball I mean I was just was having the best time ever and the cast were incredible so I decided to stay for six more months yeah what, what was uh, what were some of your favourite bits in the show to do some of the favourite scenes some of the favourite songs um, but, I mean the finale was just always brilliant I mean I loved the girl that played Thelma she's called Sophie Carmen Jones she's a true star in the making yeah. that girl and well you know you saw her do it but mm, um, great. We, we we just became the greatest of friends so every night doing the finale with her and doing all those numbers together I mean that was just that one of the highlights and then the other part was when I did the monologue and sang Roxy and mm. um, that was kind of my chance to talk to the audience a little bit and get involved with them and see you could see everyone's face and see what they were thinking and and try, you know making them laugh and stuff I loved that I absolutely loved it yeah the, you, it was a really funny part the way you played it I, mean, I particularly enjoyed the we both reach for the gun where you're there on a, on his lap <laughs> being the, the ventriloquist dummy hilarious thank you I mean it's been played you know I guess many different ways but um it's always been kind of a little bit more of a serious role and um, I'm not a very serious person, <laughs> to be honest, Michael, so I kind of had to, had to put a bit of me in it and, uh, yeah, a bit of humour and a bit of comedy and I think that's what the British public like to come and see when they come to the theatre. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. yeah. So, um, just just uh, before we finish then, is there anything else coming up in the pipeline that you can tease? Um, well, I did a film... Um, recently um a british comedy film mm -hmm. um with uh oh gosh lots of people Adam Chowdhury is going to be in it um and uh Johnny Vegas is in it mm -hmm. and Vicky Pepper Dean and Kevin Eldon um and it's called Eaten by Lions yeah, and tell me about that what's that about then well I wasn't meant to be in it at all um it's kind of a British Asian comedy, um, and they ha the the film is with this big kind of multicultural Asian family, mm. and uh, I knew the casting director, and she said, "Oh, they're looking for someone to play the mom of the house," and and I was like, "Well, you know, I'm I'm Persian." And that's my heritage. Mm. It's, it's, you know, I'm not Indian. And she said, no, no, I think they want a multicultural family. So it won't matter where you're from. Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, you know, that, that might work. So I went and uh, I, I did my audition and he said, where are you from? I said, I'm Persian. And he went, I like that. That's very different. Okay. And mm. yeah, I, and they offered me the job there and then. And so I took it. And uh, it was absolutely one of the best things I've done. It was mm. so much fun, um, and it was a big kind, it really was multicultural, that's the best way to describe it, there was all of us, all from different races, different backgrounds, it was, and it's so funny as 
well. It's very funny. Oh, I'll have to keep my eyes out for that then, I think. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that coming out. Yeah. It's going to be really good. Do you, yeah. do you prefer kind of TV or stage or, or film? Now you've done a bit of that? Or just a bit like a bit of everything? Um, I feel very blessed that, I, that I've that i managed to be able to do both. Um, it's not an easy thing to go from TV to theatre, theatre to TV. Um, I, my background is theatre. It's where I kind of started. Mm. And then I was a latecomer to telly. I didn't start telly until I was 26. Yeah. Um, and then I got my first main part in Emmerdale. And before that I did, um, do you remember The Royal? Yeah, we, I didn't watch it, but I, yeah, I know what you mean. So I, I had a little guest lead in The Royal, and that's what started me off um, with telly. And as soon as I'd done it, I thought, my gosh, I've been missing out hmm. all my life on this. Like, being on a set is one of the most magical things ever in the world it's so good and reading different scripts every day and different lines every day yeah I absolutely loved it mm. and then after Emmerdale I went back into theatre and did Rocky Horror Show yeah um so I do feel really lucky that I'm I'm able to kind of mix the two and do a bit of both yeah so uh, you, you spoke earlier about setting your sights on a goal and going for it with your Corey and with your Roxy have you got any other kind of dream parts that you would uh, like to do or dream shows you'd like to be in um, oh gosh, I don't know about dream shows, well, I think, I think my goal is to just always work, it's very difficult as an actor, you know, sometimes you, you're constantly in work, like when I was in Chicago for an entire year, or in Corrie for two and a half years, and then this year it's been a slower year, so this year I've done theatre, and then I've done a film, and had some breaks in between, and, and it's like, oh, okay, this is, this is really what it's like as an actress. Sometimes you're working loads, sometimes you're not working. Mm. The, the aim is to just work. It's yeah. just to keep acting and, and doing what I love. I'm very lucky that I get to wake up every morning and do a job that makes me happy, it makes me smile, and it, it's not like work, it's just like playing. Yeah. It's just up every day, <laughs> you know, and um, I feel really blessed that I get to do that. So, yeah, yeah if, I, if I can keep working, um, the goal, the goal, would be, let's say, a Netflix series. All right, okay. So if I tell you that now, and in a year's time I'm in one. Yeah, we'll remember <laughs> it. It's, yeah, it's recorded now, you've got to do it. <laughs> Record it now, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I will what? be in a Netflix series at some point. Of course, personally, we'll Gemma and I would much prefer you to go back onto Curry, or maybe, maybe do Netflix first and then back onto Curry again, because I, I think there's more Netflix. to find out about Andrea. And then we'll go back to Curry. Yeah. If they'll have me. <laughs> well, you've got so many mates there, just getting to keep I know, I, know, I don't feel like I've left, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's been really lovely speaking to you today, um, Hayley. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on the show. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll watch this space for Netflix. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Michael. Bye. Bye.